I get this a lot. Using the Apostle Paul to legitimize the Apostle Paul. Using the Apostle Paul to certify the Apostle Paul. It's like, well, how do you know Paul had a for real, legit revelation from the Lord? Well, because he said he did. <laughs> how foolish is that? You never, you never confirm somebody by their own words. It's like, well, David, uh, David Koresh is the Messiah. He said he's Jesus back in the early 90s in Waco, Texas. He said he's Jesus. Well, how do you know he's Jesus? Well, because he said he's Jesus. It's stupidity. Stupidity. Even Jesus said, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. If I honor myself, my honor means nothing. Yet you use the Apostle Paul's writings to legitimize the Apostle Paul. Foolishness. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone, saluting honors to you elders, you other elders scattered abroad, and you other brethren scattered abroad. Also, Shalom. To you other followers and believers of the faith, Shalom even to you few sisters as well, <clears throat> Shalom to the elect. So I want to do this video, uh, I don't know what, I, what I'll title it, put some respect on Paul's name, Apostle Paul's name, but you know, all of us that follow Yahawasha is not going to be respected in this society, in this truth. And this is what I want to go into, I want to jump back on it because um, you have this group Sakari says he doesn't authenticate the letters of Paul unless it says probably let your woman keep solace in the churches as also say at the law, right? That the Most High didn't use Paul in situations to straighten certain things out because the Pharisees and certain men, it was all about uh, what they saw on record, but it wasn't about making things happen and, you know, shifting and moving you know just to make the situation correct sometimes you got to go different extreme measures to straighten things out just like anybody on a job things out of the ordinary you may have to do now if you if you don't agree with the letters of paul right then you probably don't believe in the messiah and this is key <clears throat> why you have to be careful with all these debates then you'll run into this is an old doctrine by the way Sakari and many others pick these doctrines up by seducers you know you have seducers that will seduce you into those spirits and it's because a lot of people don't do the research and understand what's going on uh, but we'll go back into this lesson again and uh, I'll read something that was controversial that you would have to go and do some research to understand what it's talking about so anyway, let's go to Acts 13. I'll read this. I'll read some commentary. Let's see what else. Uh, maybe a couple of things. Yeah, not much. I'll try to keep it short. Uh, Acts 13 and 4. So they being sent forth. Um, let me go up and see what this is. This is Paul's first minute missionary journey. Right? Uh, it says the church that was in Antioch. Um like Barnabas, Simeon, Niger. Okay, I'm going to just get to the point. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia, right? And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were in Sal 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 Salamis, they preached the word of Yahweh in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the aisles unto Paphos, Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, right? A false prophet, a Jew. So this is, you know, when people talk about the Jews and the Gentiles, Gentiles came on many levels. There was different forms of Gentiles. Uh, um, God fears, you had, you know, ones that believe in the Messiah. You had Jews, the Israelites, then you had some who didn't believe in the Messiah. You had Grecian Jews. So you had various forms of things Paul was dealing with. Uh, anyway, that's another video. And um, it says, and was the deputy of the country. 
Okay, here we go. A false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar, -Je Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country. Sergius, Paulus, Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul, right? And desired to hear the word of God, right? But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so his name by interpretation withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. This is when you read Matthew, it says, anyone hear the word, understand if it not, then come with the wicked one and take away what your soul in his heart. Then it goes on to say, then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Right? So we understand that Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost. So if Paul was a, a minister, a messenger, an apostle of the Most High, and he clearly saying he was filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit, why would God, why would the Most High use him? But anyway, they have their reasons. Um, uh, seeking to turn away the faith. Then Saul, who's, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, which means high level of uh, evilness, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not ease cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? With a question mark. And now behold, a hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. Now seeing the sun, uh, not seeing the sun for a season. So you're going to tell me the Apostle Paul, who had this power to do this by the hand of the Lord, he's not authenticated? Anyway. And immediately there fell on him a mist and darkness. <laughs> And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw was uh, what was done, believed, being astonished, right, at the doctrine of the Lord. So you can imagine if you picture it, you can picture that he was being a seducer and a sorcerer, trying to trick people, probably saying the Messiah don't exist like an Old Testament Israelite. So you had to know people hated Apostle Paul for this. You had to know they did the same thing to Yahawashi, right? Now we're going to get into something more controversial that I wanted to bring out. I brought this out before. This is 1 Corinthians 7 and 12, right? Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. This is dealing with teachings of marriage, right? This is the thing they have a problem with too. It says... Um, let me read the 10. And unto the married I command yet not I, but the Lord. Okay. He said not I, but the Lord. If you hear that, let not their wife depart from the husband. So now he's quoting the commandments, right? But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put her away his wife. Got to understand what was going on, especially in Corinth. I mean, in you know, the church. It was, it was sick. It says, but to the rest I speak, the rest speak I, not the Lord. If, I, if thy brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Now, why did he say this? I did research on this before. He wasn't technically talking about the Lord. He was really using guile, or let me say mockery, on the Pharisees that was saying it was all about the commandments. And if, if she has, uh, um, if, if the wife doesn't believe a man is not supposed to be married to a heathen, right? That's what was kind of going on. And the Lord was saying, I mean, Paul was saying, not I, I speak, I, not the Lord, meaning he was being smart concerning the situation because you had so much divorcing in the church. You had men that would put their wives away. You had Israelites telling men who had wives or vice versa, wives that had husbands, don't deal with them. They're heathens. And this whole thing now is about grace and mercy. So when you go back to Yahawashi, I believe with Mary, and they picked up rocks and threw it at her, that was the normal thing. Those were commandments. 
You know, you were supposed to, as they saw it, you're supposed to stone certain people who had abominable acts. You were supposed to do certain things, you know. But now, because we lost our identity, this is why we don't. And even after Yahawashah, that's when the mercy came, after he died. So this is why you don't stone your children, right? This is why there's certain things that it's not clear cut. You just got to wait on the Lord and have mercy, faith, because you never know who's going to wake up. And uh, mercy has bestowed to the children of Israel through the blood of the lamb, the blood of Yahawashah. So now there's faith bestowed on us. Can you imagine a lot of us that came into the truth if we came up against some of these men who says they're heathen men, stone them, you know, would be a problem. So we see the same thing with Yahawashah when he healed the blind, healed the blind man, right? They had a problem with that because according to them, now it's not in the law. In the law, you shut down everything, you do what you need to do, and that's it. But they've gotten away from the faith. This is why we don't push. It's all about the law. It's about faith because just following a law, you can, it can be a, a form of carnal, carnality to it. You're just saying, okay, just like somebody who prays and they praise in, in synagogues or they pray, but their prayer is not sincere. So you had a lot of Israelites who wasn't sincere and what they're doing. Let's get a little commentary just to give an understanding. Um, it says here, where am I at? First Corinthians 7 and 12. So this was really, when he said that this was all about the marriage. It says, not, uh, not the Lord. He said, not the Lord. This goes into, I do not claim this advice to, uh, to be under the influence of inspiration. I have no express command on the subject from the Lord. But I deliver my opinion as a servant of the Lord. Right? So we can go to First uh, Corinthians 7 and 40. Right? It says, but she is happier if she so abide after my judgment. And I think also that I have the spirit of God. Right? So let's go back. Um, it says, but I deliver my opinion as a servant of the Lord, having the right the right to offer advice. So he was repairing. He had a really hard job. He had to move and shake and put things together to make sense without causing the children of Israel to be full-blown adulterers using the laws to do it. Because if, for an example, if a man woke up to the truth and his wife didn't wake up to the truth, he would cast her off and say she was an adulterer because she didn't believe when she never had time, right? This is what Paul was saying. If a man believe with the unbelieving, if a, if a husband have an unbelieving wife, and this is, I'm sure, with a lot of these other groups, or, or Sakari, I'm not sure, they may have a problem with that. They believe the woman would probably have to believe. I'm not sure. But this is why they want to strip a lot of a let, uh, letters of Paul, Right? But it doesn't mean that she probably wouldn't repent and come back and learn. But if she doesn't, you can be with an unbelieving wife in the hopes that she do get it. You just can't cast her off. But that's what they were doing. It really boils down to being over-righteous, right? Having a right advice, God to, the church, God to a church which I have founded and which, I have con uh, which has consulted me on the subject. This was a case in which both he and they were to follow the principles of the Christian prudence and propriety, right? And it says, when they, when there were no express commandments, many such cases may occur. So what they was doing, they was being strict. They was being strict and say, look, this is what it say. This is supposed to be this way. So these are examples even in our churches today. There might be some things you don't exactly see in there, but you know how to, the heads and elders of churches know how to maneuver and make those work for the betterment of the body. 
Remember, this is about the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about. So if the Spirit with you, it'll help you put things in order. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians 7 and 6. It says, but I speak this permission and not of commandment. You see that? That's what it say. I speak this permission and not of commandment. Let me see what this says. This says, I speak of permission, not of a command. As the passage is given in our English version, it might seem as if Apostle implied that he had no actual commandment, but only the permission to write this, which is not to all, at all his meaning. What he does say is that the foregoing instructions are not to be considered as absolute commands from him, but in general permissive instruction to be applied by each individual according to circumstances. So the bottom line, he had to do what he had to do to get the church back in order, right? This is what it was all about. And things that might have seemed a little flaky to some, they wouldn't agree. And this is the same thing, if you think about it, that happened with the Messiah. There's, he healed the blind man on the Sabbath, uh, the man at Bethesda, the pool of Bethesda. It was various, I think it was John 9, it was various things that Yahweh did in these miracles purposely, right, to show them the way is through him. That's the way. Even though we follow the laws, it's about the laws, but when people are not uh, 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 permitting to keep the law sincerely, uh, just like at the shambles, we've seen that at the shambles, when I read up on that, what they were doing is making all kinds of sacrifices, then you had to come and you know, eat and eat from the sacrificed foods because they wasn't believing that Messiah, uh, the Messiah was the ultimate sacrifice. So they would do certain things to try to keep that sacrificial, the sacrificial offerings going when that no longer, you know, it, it was no longer an institution for a sacrifice because Yahweh had already done it. So that's, that's the point. There was a lot of things Paul did because of the unnecessary behavior of uh, the wicked Pharisees, the uh, over-righteous Israelites, the Old Testament Israelites, so to speak, that didn't believe in the Messiah. That's all I have on that, Shalom.